man is a dynamo for the cosmic work most of the time nature does whatever has to be done in him the rest is done by god and in between is man as a dynamo only his soul man's soul accepts what is according to its nature only his soul's acceptance is his own apart from that nature does something god does the rest to accept what is necessary for him that is his free will that is his free choice beyond that he has no role to play so to say once this soul once a power supreme self born before the universe was made swayambhu central being swayambhu he accepted the cosmic play he entered into the cosmic scheme of things he himself bound to the laws of nature for a certain purpose this independent once a power supreme self born before the universe was made accepting cosmos binds himself nature sir binds himself nature sir until he becomes free or he becomes a slave accepting cosmos binds himself nature sir till he becomes her freed man mukta till he becomes her freed man or god's slave he becomes the willing instrument of god carrying out the will of god through his will that is the slavery which he cherish for his own fulfillment accepting cosmos so that is his choice he has accepted the cosmos the suffering he has accepted the law of nature for what purpose for taking nature forward and in that process he first becomes a mukta free of nature or till he becomes the slave of god nature does most in him he becomes free of that god the high rest it is in that high the rest doing in him that is becoming the slave of god he is a servant he is a slave as a servant he gets the wages but then he can walk away from the master and be his own but as a slave he willingly accepts what the master tells all this therefore this is the appearance in our mortal front this is a condition as we see in front of us mortal front this is the appearance in our mortal front our greater truth of being lies behind we are not aware of the greatness that we possess our greater truth our consciousness is cosmic and immense that is the greater truth our consciousness is not just the individual consciousness it is cosmic it is immense but only when we break through matter's wall in the spiritual vastness 
can we stand that cosmic consciousness that immensity can become ours when we tear apart the walls of matter in the spiritual vastness can we stand where we can live the masters of our world and mind is only a means and body a tool that is the mastery both the physical and the mental they become instruments and it is something else than that independent who is within us who then functions this is appearance in our mortal front our greater truth of being lies behind our consciousness is cosmic and immense but only when we break through matter's wall in the spiritual vastness can we stand where we can live the master of our world and mind is only a means and body a tool for about the birth of body and of thought about mind and the body our spirit's truth lives it lives in the naked cell our spirit truth lives in the naked cell and from that height unbound survey the world when we go about the body about the thought then we can survey the functioning of this world our spirit truth lives out of the mind she rose to escape its law so what was tied down until now that with which savitri was tied down until now it is that she discards out of the mind she rose to escape its law that it might sleep in some deep shadow of self or fall silent in the silence of the unseen either that mind might fall asleep or fall silent silent in the silence of the unseen hi she attained and stood from nature free the condition of nature does most in him got the high rest she has now become free of nature hi she attained and stood from nature free and saw creation's life from far above she is witnessing is entire creation from planes beyond mind i she attained and stood from nature free and saw creation's life from far above dance upon all she led her sovereign will to dedicate it to god's timeless calm then all grew tranquil in her being to space the moment she has risen above mind everything has fallen quiet has become calm tranquil then all grew tranquil in her being to space only sometimes small thoughts arose and fell like quiet waves upon a silent sea she has fallen quiet at times there is a small ripple on the surface of the calm ocean only sometimes small thoughts arose and fell like quiet waves upon a silent sea or ripples passing over a lonely pool there is nothing around but a pool when a stray stone disturbs the dreaming rest the pool in isolation of nature is calm 
but some stone falls on it and the ripples form around it it is in that manner when the silent mind is now what savitri is experiencing in the silent mind maybe a thought comes like a stone dropped on the pond creating some ripples only sometimes small thoughts arose and fell like quiet waves upon a silent sea or ripples passing over a lonely pool when a stray stone disturbs is dreaming the rest yet the mind's factory has ceased to work it was not now mind working at all some thought stray thought might come and produce small ripples there was no sound of the dynamo's drop that engine has stopped there was no sound at all yet the mind's factory has ceased to work there was no sound of the dynamo's drop there came no call from the still fields of life neither thought nor life with its passions emotions nothing disturbed her yet the mind's factory has ceased to work there was no sound the dynamo's throb there came no call from the still fields of life then even those ripples even the surface disturbance that also ceased then even those stirrings rose in her no more her mind now seemed like a vast empty room it is no more a pond empty vast empty room her mind now seemed like a vast empty room or like a peaceful landscape without sound vast spaces of calm in the depths of nature then even though stirring rose in her no more her mind now seemed like a vast empty room or like a peaceful landscape without sound this men call quietude and prize as peace this condition of stillness of calm of the total absence of thought this is what men call as quietude this men call quietude and prize as peace but to her to savitri but to her deeper side all yet was there with her deeper side she could still see something below the surface but to her deeper side uh, all yet was there ever was seeing like a chaos under a lid as if a cover has been put and below that something is constantly boiling ever was seeing ever was seeing like a chaos under a lid feelings and thoughts cried out for word and act as if they were suppressed under the lid feelings and thoughts cried out for word and act but found no response in the silent brain in the silence the brain all was suppressed but nothing yet expands not that they were not there they were there although they had fallen quiet they were under the lid all was suppressed but nothing yet expands at every moment might explosion come because they are there things can suddenly explode at any moment you have put a heavy lid but if the boiling is very vigorous it can throw off the lid at every moment might explosion come then this too paused 
the body seemed a stone, still like a stone, a carved statue. Then these two pause, the body seemed a stone. All now was made was a wide, mighty vacancy. But still excluded from eternity has yes, it was vacant, but still eternity has is not there. It is excluded, it is away from eternity has all now was a wide, mighty vacancy, but still excluded from eternity's hush, but still was far the repose of the absolute and the ocean silence of infinity. The ocean silence of infinity is still very far away. Mind has fallen quite, a lid has been put on it, but that does not mean that it cannot burst out, it cannot explode. And the ocean silence of infinity is not there. What a line. And the ocean silence of infinity, pure, overhead poetry.